My name is Gigi Lanchba, and I'm going to be presenting the uh, online science cafe today. Since we can't do one in person, this is what we're going to be doing. I'm coming to you this evening from the Fort Hayes State Makerspace in the basement of the Forsyth Library on campus. So I hope you have a, a snack or something to drink with yourself there at home. I've got something to drink, we're ready to go. I don't know how many of you are aware of the Fort Hayes State Makerspace. The Makerspace was established about six years ago by Dr. Adams. We are open to the entire community, students, faculty, university staff, or any members of the public. In these times of social distancing, a lot of things aren't working quite like they normally do, thus the virtual science cafe. But the makerspace is open. You'll need to check in at the library front desk if you wanna come down here. And we are limiting the number of people who are here at any time. It's not a problem if you wanna come down and see us and we'll help you with whatever you're working on. The idea of a makerspace is we're a resource to help you make things, make your projects. We have different technology here and then expertise from me and my student workers. We'll help you out with your project however we can. During our program this evening, I'm going to go through some of the technology that we have that we can help you with. What kind of projects do people come to us with here? We do all sorts of different things from the very simple to very complex. We have people that come down here and they just need to borrow a screwdriver for 10 minutes. And we have people that have been coming here for multiple years working on a long-term project. They'll come in, work a few hours this day, a few hours the next week, just as they have time available, and we help them with their projects. I'm gonna show you some of the projects that we've helped people with here in the past, just so you can sort of get an idea of what you could do here in the Makerspace. When people think about the tools that we have available in the Makerspace, one of the first things that comes to mind is our 3D printers. We currently have five 3D printers. We have a 3D printer that can print multi-colors. We have a larger capacity one, and then a couple smaller capacity ones that print very quickly. All of our printers print in plastic, typically PLA plastic. And I'll go over to the machines now, and you can see some of that. So we're gonna get up and walk around here. So I am coming to you from the makerspace here. So as I walk around, you can sort of get a view of it. This here is our main room. We have a larger outer room and a smaller inner room. So here in the main room, right when you come in, you can see some of our 3D printers. So there's the one, another one, number three, number four, and then the fifth one is around the corner in the other room. These machines are very versatile. They print with rolls of plastic like this here. So they come in uh, about two pound rolls. And they're not very expensive. You can get them in all kinds of different colors. In fact, I'll go ahead and show you. Going back in here into the back room, we have quite a few different colors of plastic on hand at any given time. This is our cabinet. So you can see different colors. Our machines will use different size plastics. When it comes to 3D printers, most of this is PLA plastic. I like to keep a wide variety of colors in stock for people. Some transparent, we have some glow in the dark back there. And in just normal colors, orange, red, black, pink. Wood filled plastic. So it's actually made with some actual wood in the plastic. If you're wanting to print something in a specific color that we don't have, we're always willing to order in something special for you. Usually it only takes about a week to get some custom plastic in. Over here, we can see the larger machine doing a print right now. So this is our largest machine, and it has a capacity of a one cubic foot. That's gonna be about a 12 hour print. It's about halfway through it right now. To 3D print something, you need a file in the right format for the machine. Typically, 
you want an STL format file. Uh, if you happen to have a file in a different format, usually it's pretty easy to convert it to that format. We can see a couple versions of a STL file. So a little column capital here. Up here, we can see this is in a CAD program. This is Blender. That's one of the programs we have available here in the Makerspace. There's the file, the three-dimensional object. When we load it in the computer, here, this is the software that will print it. So we need to load our 3D file into the computer, then we'll set our parameters. It's very similar to like what a printer driver would do with a normal inkjet or laser printer, but there's more settings. So we're gonna change settings that relate to temperature, sizing, support matrix, density. Typically we print these prints with about a 10% internal fill. That's all you need for it to maintain its shape. There's the file. And then there it is actually printing. These types of 3D printers that we have here, by taking plastic off of their feed roll and they melt it, they'll heat it up to a high temperature. Depending on the type of plastic, depends on the temperature you need to heat it to. With a PLA plastic like this is, you're gonna heat it up to about 200 to 205 Celsius. Right down in there is the heating element. It's electric, it's really hot, so don't touch it. Here you can see the feeder. Basically it's just a gear that pulls the plastic in and melts it and then squeezes it out onto the bed there. So it prints it in layers. You can vary your layers depending on your print quality. Typically you're gonna print about a 0.2 millimeter layer but that could go down all the way to 0.1 or less for a very high quality print. What that means is the head of the printer here will move around in the X and Y plane and lay down the plastic onto the bed. It'll move all the way around, do one layer, and it will move up by the layer thickness. So in this case, it'll move up 0.2 millimeters, then do the next layer, then the next layer, then the next layer. So this particular print here is gonna take all night to run. Over here, we can see our multi-material printer. This attachment here allows you to put four different colors of plastic in it and do a print with multi-colors like that. So I'm gonna go over here. I have some of our examples laid out on a table to show you some of what the 3D printer can do. For instance, this is a multicolor 3D print. It printed it in red, white, and black. Here's one in white, black, and yellow. It can only do four colors. You just have to pick four colors that we have. You load it into the software and assign colors to different areas of the model, and then it will print them. Here's another example that we did. Here we can see an example. This is a partway finished print that was stopped. So if you look at it, you can see the hollowness inside. So this is about the 10% fill like we normally use. That's plenty strong to hold up the object and it saves material and it makes it print faster. What kind of things might you want to 3D print? There are thousands and thousands of 3D files available online for free. There are a few you have to pay for, but there are plenty that are free and easy to get. Websites like Thingiverse, have a lot available. A lot of museums will have 3D file websites. Metropolitan Museum, British Museum, they have a large part of their collection available as free 3D scans online. So you can do things like this. We can print you know, a miniature copy of an actual museum artifact. An Egyptian statue, bust of Ramses II, the real one's about 20, 25 feet high. It's from a museum in Rome, statue, head of Constantine. We've printed them off for people doing presentations. We printed them off for classes where they were studying different things. Then they'd have an actual version of the object they were discussing that they could pass around. Or just people who wanted it, just something decorative to put in their office. Lots of things you can find. For instance, got a Baby Yoda here. Here's another replica prop, Indiana Jones. So people doing Halloween costumes or cosplay, 
We've made bits of costume, bits of props for them this way. If you know CAD, you can build a model. You can build it from scratch, or you can start with an existing thing and modify it. So we've got several different objects here that I'm gonna show that were created in CAD and we made custom for people. They were made for different purposes. For instance, this is just a little one. Here's a little tiny clip and it's just a replacement clip for somebody's window, but they couldn't find it. The window was years old. They don't sell the parts anymore. So we modeled them up this little clip and 3D printed some off for them. Really easy to do. It just takes, a, probably took 20 minutes to make the model. It took about 10 minutes to print one. And very cheap. We don't charge very much money for our 3D printing. We basically only charge enough to cover our costs. So we're gonna charge 15 cents a gram for something like this. And this is like two grams. This is a 3D printed clock face. Replacement for a antique clock that was broken. Same thing, we just modeled this up, 3D printed it off. On this one, there were actually a couple different versions of it. Printed off a version, made some changes to it till they had exactly what they wanted, and then printed it off again. This also shows one of our different filaments. So this is a metallic filament here. This is metallic copper. That's not one that we always have in stock, but if it's what you want, we can get it ordered in. A little maze that was made for a science experiment. Just yesterday, I custom made this cookie cutter for someone to help them with a project. And it was, I think it was th like 30 cents worth of plastic. So very cheap for them and it, they could get exactly what they want. Here's a car part that we've been working on. Same thing, custom prototyped this up, printed it out. And we're probably going to do a couple iterations with them to make sure they get exactly what they want. Another thing I have laid out here are some maps. We have made quite a few three-dimensional terrain maps, topographic maps. So here you can see, this is a 3D topographical map of Ellis County, Kansas. You can see Hayes there marked in the middle. There's a really good resource that um, Iowa State University has it will give you the topographical map file in a version that can be printed. And then for instance, on this one, I edited it to add labels. The map I showed you had about a five time vertical exaggeration to make it easier to see what's going on. Here's a map of the entire state of Kansas that I made. Topographic map of Kansas. There you can see the slope going from the east to the west. So we've done several large scale versions of these topographic maps for people. One last summer that we printed in multiple pieces. It was a map of some rangeland here in Ellis County. It was about three feet by two feet when the whole thing was done. Here's another example. This is a topographic map of part of the surface of Mars. So here we can see the Mariner Valley system on Mars. Those topographic maps are great for a variety of things classrooms, develop for people. I did one for some people that were going camping and we 3D printed out the national park where they were going hiking in so they could have a little three-dimensional map to take with them when they went hiking. Some other things, we printed out a lot of D&D &D characters for people. Here's a scientific model, Ming sponge. This would have been generated by a, just a mathematical formula. So you can get your inputs in a bunch of different ways. One thing I'm gonna show you now is one of our 3D scanners. So we have two different ways that we could 3D scan an object. Here's the scanner. You can see the little ceramic owl there. That's sitting on the laser scanner. And in there, there's the output on the screen. So you'd have we have to scan the object multiple times, output a point cloud that we can convert into a mesh that is editable, a CAD program, and then you can 3D print it. So, there's the original, and there's a 3D printed copy of it. So this is sort of just a little test object. We also can do it three-dimensional scanning with photogrammetry. That's where you take a bunch of photos of an object, and we input it into some software, and we can derive a mesh from that. 
So we've done some of those for people here on campus, for artifacts, and we've even done work on building a model of an entire building with photos taken from a drone. So that's one real nice thing about the photogrammetry is you're not limited to small hand-sized objects like you are with the laser scanning. Here are a couple examples of a project that we did this summer. This is a little animal skull. We printed those off for Sternberg Museum as resources for their campers this summer. So this would have been derived from a scan, probably a CAT scan. They got the files online, gave them to me, and I was able to print them for them. So we printed about 50 of these different copies of weasel and badger skulls for the campers this summer. And then they could just send the copies, these little plastic copies, off to the students at their home, and they could study them. They, they didn't have to worry about sending actual artifacts out. Here's another human skull. We've printed out these for several biology classes here on campus. Moving beyond the 3D printing, what are some other things that we can help you with here in the makerspace? Well, one of the things we have is a vinyl decal cutter. So, here it is. There's our vinyl decal cutter. The machine we have has a capacity to do up to 30 inch wide sheets of vinyl. You can cut them out, make stickers, decals, bumper sticker, sticker for your laptop. So the vinyl comes on rolls like this. This is a one foot wide roll, red. Got many different colors. Probably have about 50 different colors of vinyl on hand at any time. Some of the bigger ones down there you can see. Those are bigger two foot wide rolls. You can make things like these. We've made a whole bunch of these stickers to give to people as a promotional item for the makerspace. And these stickers is probably about 10 cents each, maybe five cents each, and very easy to make. All we have to do, we have loaded up the image into the software, and then we just send it to the cutter and cut it. I'm not gonna cut it right now because it is loud, so probably couldn't hear me very well if I did, but it's simple. You can just grab an image, you can edit it again, really easy to do. So, some other examples of things that we've cut with vinyl. We've made quite a bit of labeling around the makerspace. So, all of this signage here, this was cut out on our vinyl cutter. And we've done the same for some other people on campus too. So this is a new piece of technology. We have a Dremel DigiLab laser here that we got earlier in the spring. There's the machine. Very user-friendly interface. We just have to load in an image and it can be an image that we, you know, we derive in a CAD program, a Illustrator type program, or just, you can even just take a photograph of something and then we can edit that and cut off of that. So it will cut and etch both. This is not an industrial strength laser, but it will cut cardboard, we can cut leather, we can cut thin wood, we can cut acrylic plastic, we can cut fabric, paper, we can engrave on thicker woods, uh, anodized aluminum, plastic, things like that. I have a few examples. This is an example of what engraving on wood looks like. Basically wood burning. And you get really nice results. It took about 10 minutes to engrave that. In this spring, we made a large number of plaques for award ceremonies this way. Here's another plaque. Another example here. This took about 20 minutes to make. Here's an example of something that we've made with the laser cutter, where we're cutting all the way through. This is a bathymetric map of Lake Superior. It's made by cutting out layers and then stacking them. This is Lake Erie here. You stack them up to get the different layers. We derived that data from the same website that we used for 3D printing the topographic maps. So if you wanted to make a topographic or bathymetric map, that's another easy thing to do with the laser cutter. We made a chess set earlier in the year, engraved this 
chess board on the clear acrylic. You can put material in it up to a 20 inches by 12 inches. Over here is our soldering station. We have several soldering irons, tools, equipment, if you're wanting to make something or repair something. We have people come in here to repair things fairly often. I've done it myself. We've helped people custom build things, our uh, Arduino controlled things, keyboard switching, different things like that. So whether you're building it from scratch or you want to repair something, we can help you with that here with our soldering station equipment. And if you don't know how to solder, we can help teach you. We have some little, uh, little easy kits here that show you how to solder, but we can help walk you through it. Other equipment we have available down here in the makerspace. We have several sewing machines. Here are sewing machines. If you don't know how to use them, we'll get you going. We'll teach you how to use them, whether you're needing to make something from scratch. We've had people make Halloween costumes or you need to repair something. We've repaired the inflatable planetarium dome with this equipment. And we've just had people who ripped their pants and needed to sew them up, and we've helped them with that too. Going over here, we can see one of our workbenches. So we have a couple workbenches here with hand tools and power tools that are available to use. We don't have a full-blown wood shop, metal shop here, but for smaller projects, it's really helpful. We can help you out with that. If you're fabricating something or repairing something, we've got a whole bunch of screws, nuts, washers, different components, bearings, things like that. If you might need something like that to repair what you're working on. And wrenches, sockets, drill, drill press, Dremel tools here, engraving, cutting, sanding. These are really handy. Dremel tool is probably the power tool I use the most of anything. Oh, here we go. I'll show you this. This is another example of something that we have done with our laser cutter. We have engraved our name on tools here to mark them. So that's another example of what you could do with the laser cutter. One project that we've helped with a lot here in the makerspace is the uh, high altitude ballooning program. So I have some of that equipment here. So. This is one of our ballooning payloads. We fabricated this here in the makerspace to hold our equipment going on the balloon launch. Here you can see inside, we have some sensors, recorders to record the data. So working with Dr. Adams, we're gonna do several balloon launches later this fall. We did a double balloon launch two weeks ago where we launched two balloons here from campus and then they came down south of Victoria. And then we're gonna to continue to do that working with different students during the rest of the year. This is one of our weather balloons here. This is our radio. And here's another payload for one of the balloons. So we have other videos and pictures of that on the website and other places. Uh, so you can look at that later if you're interested in seeing one of our balloon launches. A helium balloon, about 8 foot in diameter, at ground level, lifts about 10-12 pounds. And the balloon will go all the way up about 90-100 thousand feet. And the balloon will pop when it gets up high like that, comes down with parachute, and it will go retrieve it. Our radio communication box here is how we track it. There's a GPS tracker inside and a radio transmitter inside. The radio transmitter allows the FAA to keep track of it and it also allows us to track it online. Last time we we couldn't see where it had come down but we could see where it was pinpointed on the map with the GPS and we just walked straight over to it. Easy as can be. So this has been sort of a quick overview of some of our equipment here in the makerspace. If you don't know if we can help you, just ask us. Give me a call down here at the makerspace, send us an email, and we'll talk to you about your project and what we can do to help you. 
whether it would be something with the 3D scanner, the 3D printer, the laser cutter, sewing machines, soldering, or just some kind of general repair or fabrication. For students, we've helped them 3D print or fabricate items for presentations or projects, help them fabricate parts for robots, for display. Some of the students here on campus, we've 3D printed components that they used in metal casting for art projects. For teachers, we can 3D print components, we can laser cut components for classroom items, for, uh, you know, examples. Uh, for instance, for the one forensics class, we printed off several different examples of bones with different types of injuries on them for the class to study. If you're a member of the public, you're certainly welcome to come down here. We've helped quite a few different members of the public with projects. Uh, we've helped fabricate some uh, replica parts for automobiles. We have helped people build mock-ups for projects that they were hoping to get going, like for a, a presentation, and we've helped people fabricate small repair items. We have software down here, so if you're wanting to use any of the equipment, the vinyl cutter, the laser cutter, the 3D printer, we have software that can help you with that. Photo editing software, vector-based drawing software, several different CAD programs. For basic learners, there's Tinkercad, that's a great uh, easy first CAD program. Uh, we have Blender for some more organic modeling. We've got some AutoCAD licenses here that can be used. And I uh, have a couple versions of Rhino here that people can use. Even if you're coming in and you don't have any experience with what you're trying to do, we can get you started from the ground up. What I like to say here at the Makerspace is, we're not here to do your project, we're here to help you do your project. And whatever it is, we're here to help you. All kinds of different things, from very serious research projects to just, you know, 3D printing a fun little cartoon character to set on top of your monitor. Uh, we do have a few items we have where we charge for are for materials, and all our charges are very minimal. We just charge enough to cover the cost of the materials. If you were interested in a particular thing, you just ask us and we could let you know what it would cost to do it. When we load up a 3D model in the computer, we can see how much plastic it's gonna use and then we can see how much we're gonna charge you for that. So we can see right off, is this gonna cost you 50 cents or $5 or $10 or whatever it would be. So you know right off how much money it's gonna cost you. Same thing that will also tell us how long it will take to print there. The Makerspace is open eight in the morning till seven in the evening, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and eight in the morning to five in the evening on Friday, and then we're open Sunday afternoon, one to five. Our hours vary a little bit every semester depending on what the library's hours are and student availability. But either me or one of my student workers will be here during those hours to help you with your project. I encourage you, any of you, if you want to come down here, you're certainly welcome to. With the social distancing rules, you just need to check in at the library front desk and they'll give you a badge to come on down to us. So we are located again in the basement level of the Forsyth Library, room 062. You can just come on into the front of the library, go down the stairs, go down the elevator, we're right there. That's pretty much all I have for you now again. Just thank you for attending this virtual tour, and I hope to see some of you down here in the Makerspace again in person.